We all start somewhere. We start with the day. We start with him. We start with family. We start with a lesson. And the perfect wave. We start here and here. We start at your office and your home. We start with the connections that matter the most. The ones that move us. Change us. Inspire us. In an ever-expanding world, personal connections are what tie everything together. What ties us together. We all start somewhere. At GTA, we start with you. Buenas and half a day, everyone. It's me, Damon Michael, or else also known as the Memon, here co-casting with our newest co-caster of the League of Legends scene. Half a day, everybody. My name is Winston Glindo, also known as Wantun. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Well, um, we have a good game here today. We're going to be streaming the live scrim versus Cuddly Wudley Bear versus the UOG competitive team. Now, of course, before anything happens, we want to thank our sponsors for being able to provide this stream. So we have GTA, the Pacific Federal Management, NACE Esports, Pacific Data Systems, Mac Tech Guam, Twitch, Laddie Esports, UOG Endowment, Foundation, University of Guam's Triton Store, Heavy Hitters, and last but not least, the Mariana, or the Micronesian, sorry, what is that? The Micron Brokers. Oh, Micronesian Brokers, Inc. Well, let's get into the, uh, I believe all the players are ready. They're already sitting inside the draft, getting prepped and ready to basically get the scrim going on. So uh, if we can, let's go ahead and just transition into the draft screen. So again, uh, the teams that we are having is the Cuddly Wudley Bears, or CWB as we will refer to them as right now, and the UOG Triton Esports team. So we are already getting started in drafts. Uh, Winston, take it away here from here, man. Of course, of course. So we have um, a cane ban by Blue Side. Uh, pretty much uh, kind of like a targeted ban because one of our players, Jakey, he is a cane main. And um, UOG looking to ban here. Uh, we'll see what they ban. Of course, uh, of course, the the cane ban is uh, something that our UOG mid laner does play, Jakey. But that is more towards the jungle side. And oh, not, correct. Not correct, necessarily because yeah. yeah. he plays mid for the UOG team. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and we do see that the first ban on UOG is Jinx. Uh, to me, currently, pro uh, I think Jinx is probably one of, if not the best, eighty carries right now being played for this season. Or well, not sorry, this season, this patch. Uh, the the new build for ADC of Static Shiv plus Kraken Slayer into IE on Jinx actually just helps her scale pretty well. Right, right, yeah. And we see Kali Wally Bears banning Alawi. Uh, our top laner, Ethan, does play a lot of Alawi. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alawi can be very annoying to play against in lane. So, uh, yeah. Definitely, a lot of top laners do not like playing against Alawi because the way that laning phase happens with Alawi, it's... She is very aggressive in a way that she can just completely shut down and neutralize most top laners. Um, we do see UOG's second ban is Orianna. Orianna is a staple mid laner. Like right now, like you can't go wrong blind picking her. She basically has like a really great wave clear, really great laning, uh, but she excels in the team fights, of course. Of course, yeah. Next ban, we do see Cuddly Water Bears have decided to ban Mordekaiser. This is also one of our top laners of like infamous picks. He loves playing Mordekaiser. He loves playing Alawi. Well, he hasn't really gotten to show Alawi, but his Mordekaiser has been something that we had looked at. Uh, we do see Yoji has next banned Volibear, and Volibear has been something really high priority in the current patch. Uh, he just becomes this unstoppable tank when he gets to, like that two to three item spot. Right, right. Uh, ooh, and look at the first pick on Cuddly Woolly Bears is Darius. Darius. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the UOG team's top laner is a Darius one trick, yes. or at least plays a lot of Darius. Yes. Um, and we do see that UOG opens with, on red side, Kaisa Nautilus, one of the premier bot lanes that you can play. Just the amount of pressure and the amount of 
lane dominance that that combo has can get really strong. Right. What are your thoughts on these openers that we see? Well, looking at the band and the first pick Darius on the side of Charlie Willy Bears, it looks like our top laner is going to have to play, um, probably play maybe Aatrox or something else he's comfortable with since mm -hmm. most of his comfort picks have been banned and uh, have been picked. So that's going to be interesting to see what he'll be able to pick here. Of course, and now we do see that Kali Wally Bears is currently, I don't know if that's a hover, I don't know, actually it's been locked in. They do lock in the Nami. Now, usually the next pick that uh, comes with Nami is Lucian, of, Lucian, course. Like, of course. That is yeah. the number one, like, Lucian Nami is probably, if not the most aggressive bot lane that you could pick. And oh. we, oh, uh, there's actually just a little turnaround. We do see Zaya was picked. Now, in multiple seasons, uh, there is a thing called the Kaisa Zaya meta, mm -hmm. where it's basically like pro players and just teams in general will handshake Zaya Kaisa. Yeah, it, it's like just this thing that comes down towards drafting, um, and we do see that they have uh, top laner for UOG has gone with Orn. Orn. Now, I believe we've seen. Uh, Ethan's Orn played a lot. Yes, and he's actually really good at it. This mm -hmm. uh, this pick for some reason, I've I've seen him shine on it because it's something that he is comfortable on. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many games have you seen on him on Orn? Uh, personally, for me, I've seen him maybe just a few games. Um, I know he played it once during tryouts for the team, and other than that, I, s I feel like I've only seen him play it uh, once after that during another practice. Mm -hmm. And. At least I think I did play against Ethan Zorn one time, right. and I felt I felt the presence of how good he was at beginning the fights on this champion. Um, I would like to point out that with the Nami Zaya lane, I guess what they're trying to go with is this very disengage heavy lane. Right. Uh, they did already figure out once they saw the Kaisa Nautilus that this was going to be a go button, just hit the back line with all the uh, all the spells and try to get something going. Um, with long range utility. Right. And now we're going into the second banning phase. And we do see that Yoji has banned Karma and CWB has banned Lee Sin. Lee Sin and of course the Twisted Fate as well. Um, if many of you don't know, Twisted Fate used to be really popular a few patches ago. Um, it used to be the most dominant pl uh, champion because it was played AD. But they kind of have slightly nerfed the AD side, so it's still playable. Don't get me wrong; it's still it's still viable, but it's not something that uh, people want to go towards anymore because there are just better options. Right. Now, currently, we do see the Rek'Sai ban. Um, I don't know how much of you know about what's going on with Rek'Sai. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything that's going on with Rek'Sai? Uh, me personally, I don't really see a lot of Rek'Sai, especially in my elo, because I'm pretty much still low elo. But I know Rek'Sai is very strong in the meta right now. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in higher elos, just because of how good her early game is and how mobile she is in the jungle. Well, that I mean, yeah, you're not wrong about that. But currently, the way that Rek'Sai is being played is in the top lane. Oh yeah, uh, it's actually become this very top lane neutralizer. It's she just gets immensely tanky to the point where nobody can kill her because of the new like, all the like mini reworks that she's been getting over patch and patch and patches. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I do kind of question that ban a little bit just because we already saw the Ornn. Yeah. Um, but we do see that the junglers for both sides have been picked, and we do see J4 locked in for the side of UOG and Xin Zhao locked in for the side of CWB. Um, what are your thoughts with these second ban picks? Um, with these second ban picks, uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, UOG has a lot of um, all in for team fights with the Ornn and J4 ult. And also the Nautilus Hold, they have a lot of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, on the side of CWB, it looks like they're going to be fighting a lot, which is Jin Zhao and Darius. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, the, the side of UOG seems like they have a very, a very good team fighting presence. Like um, all the CC and all the just the long range engage that that team has is looking to set up the Kai'Sa to really be really dominant. And now we see the infamous pick that um jakey likes to play his yasuo this is something that he's very comfortable on mm -hmm. hasn't really gotten to show it but now we get to see it for the second time in a row and i think it's gonna be actually really good i think he is very comfortable you know he loves his yone he loves his yasuo of course the UG team does like to play their mages but on the other side i know who the mid laner is and i know how good he is at ari 
Yeah. Ari is one of his stable picks. And I think this is going to be something that we're going to have to pay attention to because I think this mid lane matchup is going to be the matchup that ma makes or breaks the sides this game. Right. On your thoughts, which side would you rather be on? So looking at um, both sides, uh, Yoji is looking pretty good. Like I just said earlier, they have a lot of good team fight potential with the Orin ult, the Nautilus, and J4 lockdown. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at CWB, they also have a lot of potential to 1v1 people with the Jin Zhao and the Darius. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I would rather be in on Yoji's side. Yeah. Uh, just because uh, I like just being in team fights, and um, I think that's where I excel a lot. That, that makes sense. I yeah. mean, you do play a lot of mid and you do play a lot of uh, jungle. And I know that you've been practicing a lot of different mid lane champs. Um, in this like pit, uh, specific scenario, I know you would probably flock towards the Ari. Have you ever tried Ari versus Yasuo? Um, actually, I have not. I'm not a very big Ari player, mm -hmm. but um, I would try it though. You would yeah. try it? Yeah. I mean... Uh, I mean, you're also going to be part of the comp. Uh, well, not the comp team, but the uh, in the tournament that is right. coming up in a week, guys. So do stay tuned because in one week, the League of Legends tournament that we are so excited for is going to be happening. And as we do, of course, what we did uh, previously just saw was the pick and ba uh, pick and ban face using a third party uh, screen, which was Pro Draft. Uh, right now, all the players are just going into the actual game to get the draft over with. But let's go ahead and just talk a little bit more about the League of Legends tournament. How excited are you for it? I'm very pumped for this. Um, as you said last stream, this is our really like our first big League of Legends tournament in over four years, I would say, four, three years. Mm -hmm. um, looking, looking, looking forward to it. Um, hoping more teams would sign up. Uh, registration still going. Um, first games are on April 6th, which is next week. And um, looking forward to it. Um, how about you, Damon? I know you were in the first um, League of Legends tournament that happened. That was actually hosted by Laddie Esports mm -hmm. over four years ago in 2020. Um, how was that experience for you? And um, what would you like to see in this tournament? Well, um, I actually was not. I don't think I was actually a part of the very first uh, Laddie Esports uh, tournament. I may be wrong, mm -hmm. but I have played in about maybe three or four local tournaments since, um, I, I forget, I think it was like 2018. Yeah. Uh, and I've been in the scene for that long and every year it just progressively got better and better It was so much fun getting to meet so many new people um, Getting just to play different styles of the game because League of Legends is a it's a wide vast game There's so mm -hmm. many different players so many players that like to play certain styles and so many players that are just like wow They are really good, right? Um, like for for example like uh, some of our local uh, some of our local like OGs like uh, that are part of like the the Dunna squad, like mm -hmm. that's going to be coming out in the tournament. It's them; they have been in this scene for even longer than I was probably born. I don't know, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but these guys are like really good players, right? Right. And then there's a bunch of new rookies that are just coming out. Like for example, like the UOG team. I know there are a couple of uh, rookies on that team. That uh, the the one that comes to my uh, to mind is the support player, um, Itchy. Yeah. He is like I think this is his first year playing League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Actually, I yeah. mean he's seen the game, he's seen multiple different variations of the game, and he's been a play a game player like a video game player for a while. But mm -hmm. to see that him pick up the game and then watch him climb and climb and climb and just get a little better over time, it's very interesting. Right. And I really hope that um, if we do happen to get more <laughs> players coming out to the OG tournament, that we get to see these rookies that have never touched the competitive scene right right um i believe this will be your first com competition as well in the local scene yes in the local scene this will be my first competition yeah um what do you how do you feel about going about it do you think it's going to be uh <laughs> oh, like do you think you'll have a chance of some sort or do you think that you'll actually get to perform the way that you feel comfortable to perform um for sure i feel like i will perform the way i should be performing um i'm feeling pretty confident about this tournament mm -hmm. Um, but there are some big dogs up there, uh, especially Dunaseem, um, really watching out for those guys. But for the most part in this tournament, what I'm hoping to take away is just, you know, just the experience, yeah, right. and just have, having to try to get better at this game, mm -hmm. and just having local competition, and, you know, uh, having really good chicken partners. Of course, of course. Yeah. And um, again, guys, the registration for the UOG League of Legends tournament does not end until April 5th. Now, 
if you are interested, please go ahead and go into the Discord channels or even just message our Instagram or any sort of form of UOG uh, thing. You can find our registration form on our social medias. Um, and I, I feel like it's going to be a very good experience for everyone to want to compete. Even if you, like, let's say you go 0-6, it doesn't matter. What matters is you get to try the game and feel the competitive drive and feel the community come back together. Right. Um, now we do ha are preparing for the game. We're going to have like a, a quick spectator delay. It's going to take about a minute or two. Winston, why don't you tell us before we go into a, a quick break, list down our sponsors again. Of course. So we would like to thank our sponsors, GTA, Pacific and Federal Management, NAC Sports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, Twitch, Lottie Esports, EOG and Diamond Foundation, University of John Guam Trend Store, Heavy Hitters, and Micronesian Brokers Incorporated. Awesome, guys. Give us a quick few minutes, and we'll be back to give you the live action of the game one of Cuddly Wuddly Bears versus the UOG Triton Esports team. And we're back. Uh, we have about maybe 30 seconds left of, of the streamer delay before we get into the first game. And I'm very excited to see how this game goes. What, uh, let's go ahead and break down how tonight's stream is going to go. It's going to be a best of three. Uh, I believe it was Cuddly Wuddly Bears that won the, to the coin toss first. So they got to pick the sides first. So they got blue side, of course. So we do have UG on red, Cuddly Wuddly Bears on blue. And, I mean... How excited are you, man? Pretty excited, pretty excited. Good to see um, this competition. Um, our last stream, UOG went against your team, right? Yep. Um, this team, brand new team. Uh, glad, uh, very excited to see uh, what they have in store for us. No, definitely. I mean, uh, I believe the last stream uh, we did go up against uh, the UOG team, but we were having a little difficulties of trying right, to get right, the yeah. game or the production side of it. But of course, like you know, it's been a while since we've got on stream. Yeah. But let's get into it. Now the game has started. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at how the teams are going to adjust and play this out. Now, so for the blue side, they have a really strong jung mid jungle um, combination with Ari and Zhao. This is something that they can look to push the lane out and try to get some jungle pressure to help impact the top and the bot lane side. 
um, in terms of the uh, on red side, they have a really strong bot duo with a really strong mid jungler that can look to roam as well. Right. I'm very excited. Now, as we do see going on, we do see that red side or UOG tried to go in for a cheeky invade, but it looks like they're calling it off because they may have been spotted on a ward there. Yeah. Uh, blue side was able to sniff it out, but we do see J4 is kind of still lurking. I think he's trying to get like a flag or maybe a ward over to get a little bit more information before we get into the game. All right, so it looks like everyone's kind of just going back to some standard five point, you know, five like point start. a little boring, but it <laughs> is what it is. It's right. just to make sure that nothing happens in the early game. So looking at um, their laners, um, top lane, I know Darius is a very potent level one fighter. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you think uh, our top laner should respond to that top lane for Yoji? Well, I mean, he is a Darius one trick. He, right. he, or I don't want to say one trick, but he's a Darius main. And as a Darius main, I'm pretty sure he understands what that level one is capable of. Right. If let's say that he starts the, the Darius starts a W and just runs him down um, with his abilities, he can just take over the lane at early stages. Mm -hmm. But eventually, the Orn will get a little tankier and a little bit of uh, stats to be able to stat check the Darius. For right. Sure. Now we're already seeing. Oh, look, a, a lot, flash. A good trade burn. on bot side. Oh, like def Navi flash. Definitely. It looks like um, the UOG team. Aiden and them wanted to take advantage of the level one uh, that uh, Kaisa Nautilus has over the level one of Nami and Zaya. Really strong, uh, really strong, blowing out the flash, but they also burned the uh, Ignite. Okay, it looks like there's a level two fight going on right now. And Top side? Yep. Good trade by Orn. Mm -hmm. and it does look like Orn does come out on top. Uh, Jungle is going a little bit uh, slow. They're, they're doing their full clears right now. Xin Zhao is on Raptors. Uh, Jarvan is a little ahead in tempo at the moment, but it does look like Xin Zhao may be looking to get a mid gank here onto this Yasuo. He's kind of he's fishing, but uh, the wave is in a bad state for Yasuo and for this gank in general. So Xin Zhao is going to go back to possibly just going straight to his wolves, but again, J4 does have the current tempo. Right. Ooh, good stun there by Boba Bear. Um, they have a decent slow push going on here. Um, I think that this bot lane does need to play a little slower, of course. Right. Ooh. And this is a this is a little scary. I mean, we did talk about how the, uh, Ethan, our uh, top laner, the cursed one, does understand Darius. Oh, and oh, it could and a good trade. Good trade by the uh, by cursed one here. There's force of farm on the tower now. Definitely, and he actually, oh! Oh, and gets the first blood. All right, the Darius did not respect the amount of damage that Orn does have and gets first blood. Uh, as we do look, uh, bot lane is kind of positioning in a way that they're trying to get something to go on here. Uh, it looks like Orn does have to TP, and that I believe like the wave state that the Orn and Darius, or the Darius left the uh, the lane may have been a little bad, but it's okay. It's still manageable. I mean, now Orn's just a little good. It's just gonna be tank gear, yeah. and or Darius just has to play a little safer. He can't really go for those trades anymore until he gets a few items under his belt. And it looks like Yoji was able to kill bot side uh, Nami with that J4 gank. Oh, I I didn't even see that. I right. didn't notice there was even a gank. Good call out there. Uh, it does look like the bot lane was able to get their first blood kill, and bot lane looking to take a reset here. Uh, mm -hmm. Since after we pushed in, and oh, this mid, mid fight, fight and Jakey unfortunately goes down. Definitely, and it looks like Jakey does kind of overstep his boundaries there. Maybe playing a little, uh, a little careless because he is a uh, uh, also into an Ari matchup. Darius taking a very uh, bad trade there by the Orn. Definitely, as we yeah. see going on again, Darius is just trying to bully this Orn out of lane, and he, I think he's doing a successful job now. Yeah. After that little mishap of first blood yeah he does get to shove this wave in and he does get to just be a little bit more you know proactive if we can can we go ahead and let's just take a look at the items and like what's going on now we do see darius does have a long sword and a doron's uh, compared to the double ruby of orn they are a little bit even in cs but of course they're going to be uh the orn's probably up about 500 600 gold you do see J4 is hovering Orn so that he can probably get a successful ba back after this uh, wave gets cleared. Maybe, might might be fishing for something to be quite honest here. Oh, good. 
bot lane's looking. Uh, we it's do see. And Jiki looking to roam. But well, look at top here. lane right here. Like it looks like there was an engage in top lane, and it does look like uh, Frozen uh, Darius was able to escape what looked like the Orn ulti that was used, and also maybe uh, just the jar J4. Can you see the summoners and everything going on here? Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, let, let's go back to the game. How like, things are looking. It looks like. Ari is looking for is on a roam timer right now. He's trying to match the Xin Zhao to get some wards. Maybe look uh, for a dive on bot lane possibly. I think it's a little scary to get this dive off, but it looks like they're just gonna take the dragon. It is looking like a free dragon to be quite honest with you. Right. Um, it looks like Cuddly Wooded Bears. They are seen on vision by this ward here on top of the dragon pit, and it does look like everyone is moving towards it. Yes. Uh, bot side gets first move, but Def definitely Jakey is coming. Definitely, uh, and maybe looking for a steal here. Or a big it's gonna be a team fight. Oh, Zaya gets hooked, and then and red, red team, team steals, steals the dragon. The dragon first kill goes on to Jakey onto the boba bear, and then we see that it's continuing fight. Flashes are out. Ari is out, and it looks like UOG gets the win on this bot lane dragon fight, getting one kill and stealing the dragon. Crazy how that came to be, I, uh, but that is a, a misposition on the ADC. The right. ADC was a little bit more in the pit, so that he was like not in range of that Nautilus hook. Maybe things would have been different. Right. Maybe things would have been different because then maybe they would have been able to focus fire that Nautilus and then continuously gang bang one of them out at a time. Because the UOG team comp really needs six. They need levels uh, in order for them to actually be activated. Um, with this, we do see that Kaisa is up one kill, and we do also see that the Yasuo is up one kill. So they're going to be a little bit ahead of gold, for sure. Horn building up a very big wave topside, looking to maybe crash it and take a back. Or maybe not a back, maybe uh, go for a deep ward. Okay, got it. Uh, and... It looks like Orn is going to be trying to just get this wave in. Maybe might be uh, might be able to trade a little bit to get a get a plate, but he's, I don't think he's going to walk up. He does have Sunfire, or well, not Sunfire, but Bombie Cinders. We do see Maui is going for the very first Void Grubs. Void Grubs. Um, in the introduction of this new season, Void Grubs has been a very key component to the early game. Um, the uh, when you get six stacks of Void Grubs, it just helps you take turrets insanely fast because they of course you get just extra damage on turrets but you also get these little mites like, like they like to call them that spawn on auto attacks which just helps siege now i'm very curious to what kind of build that willow or the oh good oh hook. a good hook by nautilus but great getting very great bubble. trade on the zaya very great trade, uh, but that was a great bubble by the Nami. I feel like if that bubble didn't land, the Zaya may have died there or may have had to burn Flash and Alt, which then makes it unsafe for that lane to be played. So, so uh, now things are kind of clearing up right now and things are just going in. They're just pushing waves. They're getting vision. And we do see, like, even though UOG got first blood and got three kills, it's only a 1k gold lead, which right. realistically isn't that much compared to like how much they should be ahead right uh let's go ahead and just press tab let's like look at the item diff right now and as we do see oh wait there is a good gank in the top lane but Xin Zhao misses the wind become lightning but i think the cursed one is still gonna die for going this for he's, the gonna, Orner. he's going for the orn alt hits uh, both of them they're both brittle but doesn't matter. Well, does it actually? But it, like, hopefully this kill does does go to the Darius. He has to press R N. Oh, unfortunately, Darius lives with one HP. It was a very good fight by the Orange. Played it very well. Very unfortunate of the yeah. game, but great gank by the side of CWB. There, they were able to um, attack the Orn that's constantly being pushed up, and that is something that he has an issue with. But we do see a return gank is going down to the bot lane, and they may be looking to die at this bot lane. We do know that. Um, that all summoners are still up on the side of CWB, so it may be a very scary dive. It looks, uh, it looks like the time is kind of being wasted a little, and Maui might just look to just back off because, well, there, there's just no tank, time game. Or actually, he's just being patient. How oh, no, just gets a hook on Nami? Hook, and Nami is down. Zaya burns ult, but has to flash out of the uh, Cataclysm. Great 
engaged by the side of UOG. They were able to punish the Nami. Uh, it looks like everything was blown there, but who got that kill? Can we press tab really quick? Oh, uh, I believe it was J4. Was it J4? Yes. And I, you know what? That's solid. And it looks like they're going to try to return gank onto the Zaya that does have no sums and no ulti. Darius does get a pull onto the Orn, gets a quick trade. Orn is trading back, but he is kind of, he is sitting in a giant minion wave, so this is kind of bad for him. But he does have full stacks, so maybe he might be able to turn it, but no. Darius is just going to run away, take his, take his farm, and not try to trade back anymore. And now things are quieting down on the, this game, but we do see now the gold lead is kind of increasing a little. It is at a 1.4, 1.5 gold lead instead of that one. And now we do see there is kind of a, a discrepancy in the farm. Yes. Um, um, top lane looking pretty even, but on side on Yoji side of mid, it uh, looks like there is a lead on CWB. Mm -hmm. And on our bot side, it looks like our Kai'Sa has a lead. I agreed. Uh, Ooh, this is looking like a gank onto the Jakey here. He is being kind of pushed up forward. Wins hit before hey, Lightning gets hit. Zinja east forward, dashes it away, misses Charm, but he gets a double knockup. And then Jasso is out, out, possibly. Well played. He was able to get everything out there. This looks like a good hook, but they're going to go ahead and just back off by saving the mid laner there. Jakey with the fancy feet gets away from this gank. Amazing play. It looks like EOG is looking to start dragging here, while um, the side of CWB is very low. Mm -hmm. Massive play there. Because of that whole thing, now Xin Xiao doesn't have ult. He had to burn flash. Ari doesn't have fault. But it looks like they're just going to go ahead and just push for TP this dragon fight. Darius. TP is going on to Darius. They Warren are looking has no to fight TP, this. can't respond. Yep, J4 is out. And now CWB get the dragon. I think this is uh, totally free for them. They get it. Smite is down. Mountain Drake secured for CWB. Good TP by Darius there, able to push UOG out. But it looks like maybe even more might be going for it. Nope. And everyone's out, but it looks like Botlane's trying to fight. Okay, the Ultilis, Nautilus ulti goes off. Zion then goes to the way by Nami, and they're just disengaging. But great damage onto Boba Bear there. Willow really pushing the limits of what Kaisa Nautilus can do. They're trying to really get that damage onto Zaya. Thoughts about how the game is going so far, Winston? Um, on the side of UG, I think they're doing a very good job. Um, as you mentioned earlier, that 1k gold lead has um, has grown into about a 2.6 gold lead. Mm -hmm. um, looking very good. Uh, Orin about halfway done with the top tower. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of objectives, uh, um, of course, UG has gone the first three board grubs, but uh, dragons are pretty even right now. Mm -hmm. um, looks like the soul for this game, still unknown. Uh, we'll know about the next dragon. Oh, good bubble by bubble. Nami, though, and it looks like they're going to try to keep, keep going on. Hook out, and looks like Willow and Nautilus may not be... St oh, Ari double going in with the ulti. Will he hit the charm? Charm is, does charm miss misses. by Ari, but Good hook by Nautilus, good and hook. Good Ari gets out. Unfortunately, and Nautilus goes down. Xin Zhao getting the kill there. I think all the kills are actually on this Xin Zhao right now. If we can all go ahead and press tab. It, yep, it definitely is, and this Xin Zhao is... Definitely accelerating. Uh, this is a very scary jungler, and hopefully, yeah, the team can play around this. I think um, the way that these team fights need to go for CWB is that they just have to get the perfect picks. They have to catch like what they did there. They had to catch Nautilus and Kaisa just pushing a lane. Uh, they and just being able to punish what they have going on. Uh, right now, we do see Kaisa is uh, sitting on the turret. That might look like. A good gank or a good kill opportunity here, but Willow is gonna take it back. Uh, and now we're back into the. And it line. looks like J4 is looking for the gank top side. Yep, there is a possible gank on top side for he sure. He has no vision on the J4. Um, we do see Nautilus is trying to look for the, the opportunity to go in. Definitely. Uh, Jin's out bot side, so he's not able to respond to this if it does go through. Okay, and it looks like in. Darius is engaging on the Orn. And Nautilus Orn going in. is out. They hit the Orn ulti. Called the Forge got hit, but unfortunately Darius is on the tower and they cannot follow up on it. Correct. It seems like there were just res wasted resources. Um, really nothing, not big of a deal. They just helped get the, uh, you know, they chunked the Darius' health in. And now they're just pushing for towards the Rift Herald, I believe. Or is it still gross? It's Rift Herald. Rift Herald, right. And th that's good. I mean, on the side of EOG, they were able to get five of the Void Grubs. 
five is still a is a lot better than six. Or, I mean, sorry, not a lot better. But it looks like there might be a fight over here on Rift Herald. Everyone is kind of positioning forward, but the ADCs are not there. And it looks like Willow is currently walking towards the mid lane, but Yoji gets the free Rift Herald, and they say, Sayonara, we are out. Willow is kind of having a position in behind the Ari. They're kind of looking. They looking might go for go the Nautilus Ari. ulti here. Will, uh, Ari does not know, but he does see it now. Double ulti out, and boom. A waste. Are they? At least they just got the Ari ulti. They got the Ari ult out, but um, Arkaisa also had to use her killer instinct as well. That's true. So it is a, a trade of ultis. It's not a big deal. Nothing big out of that came. Uh, nothing big happened, but it's fine. You know, slowly but surely. Uh, we do see that the lanes are trading now. It looks like Yoji is starting to move, rotate their bot lane up to mid lane and their mid lane's down to bot lane. There is a trade going on in the top lane. Frozen, do, Frozen has gotten the damage, but he didn't miss the apprehend. Oh, but there's a hook onto Nami, but there is no ulti onto Kaisa, so I don't know how much they can really get done here. And they might be able to turn this around. Maybe if they threw a wave, tidal wave or something, they might be able to kill this Nautilus. No, but nothing happens. Does not go down. But it's fine. I mean, they're not trying to really push their luck. They don't. They didn't have any vision of who may be on the other side waiting. Darius and Orn just forever trading. Good apprehend onto Dar uh, onto the Orn, but still loses out on the trade. A little quiet now. Things are getting. A, they are kind of spiking a little bit. I think both teams. Of course, this is game one. So I think both teams are kind of getting a little slow on the pace. They're kind of getting a little, they're, they're getting their nerves. They're trying right. to feel the teams out, see what they can and can't do. Kind of, of experimenting, basically. Yeah. But this Nami may be caught here. Nami Good caught hook, out of position, onto hook onto the Nami. And Maui goes for the EQ. And Nami is down. <sighs> Damn. Uh, not, the Nami there was just out of, out of position. position. She, she knew Dragon was coming up, and she had nobody around her to be able to get that kind of vision. That was a little too deep of her. Which means this may be a free yeah. fire drake for Yoji. So it looks like CWB is going to give up this drake and looks like we are looking at an Infernal Soul for this game. Mm -hmm. um, which looks very good. Um, yeah. oh, I, I agree. Uh, the Infernal Soul for the side of Yoji, be, well any side uh, to be honest, it's going to be great. Infernal Soul, you know, it provides that extra damage and that extra burst on abilities and autos that kind of just help poke uh, team fights out. So maybe we'll uh, you see uh, CWB will kind of have to play towards the third or the maybe even soul point, but it does seem like Jakey may be going in on this Ari, gets some dashes, get, does dash through, hits the ulti. Ooh! But Ari is Real gonna... Jakey flashes, but unfortunately Ari has both dashes up and she gets away. And there, there, there it is. It's just the, the matchup, how it goes. If you do not kill the Ari instantly, then it gets really difficult. But we do see a top lane gank maybe happening. Waves before lightning. Misses, but gets the flash onto Orn. Good trade there. Good gank by the side, uh, the side of Cuddle Bear, Zin Zhao. Uh, we do see, uh, but like back to that that bot lane. Jakey almost had it. He really right. did. I think uh, the flash kind of missed the Q, uh, the temp, the Steel Tempest there, which may have killed the Ari. Uh, we, we do see that Ari was living on like 10 HP in a dream. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do see uh, apprehended by Apprehend on going on oh. to the Orn. Oh, they, it looks like Rift Herald was going down on bot lane, but look at bot lane. We do see that the Rift Herald is Looking for pushed. another charge on the... Oh, and oh, wait, Maui's Maui playing him. Mario Kart. Mario Karting the it all donut, the way up Mario Karting to all the way to lane. mid. And he crashes into the Raptor Fits. Totally fine about that, though, but like this allows the Rift Herald to possibly break this mid, but then... You get smited. You get smited. <laughs> so, about that Rift Herald charge, um, that was introduced this season. A uh, very cool mechanic, but... Um, you know, in my experiences, it kind of feels a little clunky. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I would, you know, do the charge ability on it when you click on it, and it would kind of like swerve to a different direction, which is, uh, it kind of throws me off a little bit, which I think that happened to Maui just earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's like a game issue or if it's just me. Um, has that happened to you? Oh, it's definitely um, uh, a skill issue for me. Uh, like recently, I think it was like maybe two days ago, I was yeah. playing with some friends and they, they finally let me drive the Rift Herald, and yeah. I was so excited. Uh, I, t I picked up the Rift Herald, and I went in, and I did a full 180, and I crashed into the wall, and I was just like, oh, yeah. cool, great. Um, hey, guys, sorry the tower's not broken, but uh, hey, I got to drive it one time, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I guess I just didn't get my Summoner Rift license. I don't know where you apply for it, but uh, 
Uh, it's definitely something that I will need to definitely look up. Uh, but we do see that possibly a... Uh, let's see, things are going a little quiet right now. Definitely a little quiet in the game right now. Uh, we do see pings going off in the bot lane. Everyone's kind of just getting to those moments where they're going to get strong. Can we press tab and let's just take a look at the items at the moment. So we do see that Orn is on item and a half. Darius is on an item. Uh, Xin Xiao still sitting on Sundered Sky. Or sorry, uh, Sun, uh, Sundered Sky. But he's, I don't, I believe he has a lot more gold that he just has not spent. Uh, we do see that Ari may be going into a Leandri second. Uh, interesting buy for sure. Uh, but a lot of people usually go uh, Lich Bane second or maybe even Horizon Focus second. Right. Um, we do see that it's going to be an on-hit Kai'Sa with the Rage Blade and Static Shift. I may have, like, I, I do agree with it uh, due to the fact that Cuddly Oily Bears doesn't have an actual real tank. Yeah. Then, um, yeah. Like, they don't necessarily need the AP. So, right. like, this kind of comp is fine. Um, we do see that there is a Kraken Slayer on the side. Oh, but there's a good Hook flash goes on the hook. On. Ooh, Zaya Force to use her R. And Willow goes Willow in. Willow goes for the, the kill. Un Oh, maybe the Mario going for the dive. Cataclysm oh. goes out, and Nami is forced to flash. And Great. that is all Yoji gets. Great engage there. They were able to find a flash ulti onto the Zaya, caught with her pants down, just in the mid lane farming. And it was a great pick. I uh, mean, they got the kill onto Zaya, and they also burned the summoners onto Nami, all with just burning the flash of Nautilus. Everything else, perfectly fine. We do see that Dragon may be spawning very soon. And that might be very important to have during that dragon fight because then Nami's going to have to play a little safe. Zaya's going to have to play a right. little safe. Uh, so they are possibly going to be looking towards that. Uh, Jakey is in the bot lane right now. Uh, maybe looking to try to fight this Lu uh, Lu um, Lucy Bear again. Things are going down. We do see Nami got hit with the W on from Kai'Sa, the Void Seeker. I think that's what it's called. Forgot. Yeah, Void Seeker. I'm a Kaisa main, and I forgot, <laughs> I forgot my champion's yeah. abilities. Gosh. Okay. Uh, both teams looking to contest this dragon. Yep, and this is a very important Drake. This, I'm pretty sure this Drake right here makes or breaks the team. Right. Uh, or at least, like, controls the game. Uh, maybe Dar Darius does have TP. We do see Orn is walking down. They are trying to contest for it. Yoji starting the dragon? Yep, Yoji is starting the dragon right now. But Darius might have Bear, they're here. not in position to be able to take this dragon fight. Uh, we do see the bot lane is like they can do a pinch remove. Darius is TPing straight into the pit. Yep, Darius is TPing. Forcing Orn Yoji to get out of the pit. Oh, wait, and Tidal, Tidal Wave does go goes out, out uh, wind but wall. gets windwalled by the also. And Nami. goes for Greta Gage. Nami gets hooked again, engaged on my uh, Orn to forge for the wall, and then Itchy gets a kill onto Nami, and the fight's going on. Willow gets a kill onto Darius, and then we do see the charm is going off. Will Lucifer be able to kill him? The character said no, but on the other side of the fight, it looks like Cuddle Bear does go down, but uh, on the side of CWB, they do kill the Kaisa both carries and gets a shutdown. Great team fight by UG. Uh, I'm very surprised that they were still able to win that team fight, even with both their carries basically dead. Right. Uh, but it just shows how much of a gold lead that the UOG team does have. They, I mean, they're up now six, almost 5, five k gold. basically 6k yeah. gold uh, rounded off. And this is just a really scary for the side of Cuddly Wadu Bears. Tell me, Winston, um, when, in, in this kind of situation, how does CWB come back? So in this situation, they're trying to just maybe just kind of farm up and uh, hopefully... Uh, um, Look for somebody to make a mistake, somebody to get caught out, and just try to capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, they are kind of down um, with the turret. Um, CWB has not taken any turrets yet. Uh, they are down about two dragons, and um, yeah, just trying to look to farm hard and hopefully capitalize on somebody's mistake. Oh, and we do see a, ho a hook onto Nami again, but the game has paused a little bit. I think there is some production issues with the game. I think the game may be frozen a little bit. We may have to restart the stream. We're going to go ahead and just quick a quick technical break here because uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, it looks like the game has frozen. Re restart the, we're going to have to restart the client a little bit, try to get this back in. Uh, but let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the, the current status of what's going on with this game. We right. do, like we do see, like we saw before, Yoji is up 6K. They just got the third strike. Um, and they're just they have a commanding lead. Right, right. 
So as we're seeing, um, you know, as you talked in draft, UOG's team fight this game is very strong um, with Orange are very good team fighting. Um, they also have a very uh, a lot of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, as we you know said, uh, team fighting is very good. Mm -hmm. um, fights are looking pretty clean for the most part, um, and you know it's just snowballing to a very good lead. Um, they're taking very good objectives, good roams, and um, it's looking very good inside of UOG. Uh, no, but what are your thoughts on it? Definitely. I mean, of course, uh, UOG, they just played it really well. They, uh, you can see how much practice they've been putting into making sure that this team learns how to basically mesh together. Right. And, it's, of course, with this game, it's, it's, it's whatever. It's yeah. like, um, not, sorry, not whatever. I don't want to say whatever. But, like, they're learning. Every both teams are learning. That it's the first game. The nerves are going to be there, so everyone's kind of shaking a little bit. Maybe CWB comes back in the game two. Maybe right. game three. Who knows? But what CWB needs to do now is slow the tempo down. UOG has a commanding tempo. It's going on super quick, and they're just snapping at the like snapping at every fight. Right. CWB needs to play for these picks. They have Ari. They have Xin Xiao, and they just need to look where someone is caught out of position and dive bomb them. That right. Especially if it's the Kaisa. I believe Kaisa or Yasuo needs to be the first person prioritized. This Darius needs to get to the point where he can be able to take over and kind of front line, but not really front line, but just sit in a point where Zaya can like just rain feathers and just constantly kind of peel backwards. Because that team wants to always go in. Uh, you know, with the Yasuo, with the Orn, with the J4, they are looking to just dive bomb in. Yeah, yeah. But it's fine. Uh, it does look like we are kind of getting the game back into position. We're just trying to figure out where the timer was to, uh, to where we left off. And, you know, these kinds of things happen. It's, it is a um, technical area. We, there's nothing we can do about that, right? We're not, we're not professionals here, but we are trying our best. All right. So while they're doing that, uh, I'd like to take someone to thank our sponsors again. Mm -hmm. uh, GTA, Pacific Federal Management, NAC Sports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, mm -hmm. Twitch, Lari Esports, Yoji Endowment Foundation, University of Dom Trench Store, Heavy Hitters, and Micronesian Brokers Incorporated. Definitely. And again, guys, registrations for the League of Legends tournament is still gone going. It does not end until April 5th, uh, which is next week, Friday. So we still have a, one week to be able to get your registration. And if you get a team together, it doesn't matter if you haven't practiced. It doesn't matter. Just get a bunch of your buddies. Let's go ahead and let's just play some League. It, really realistically what we're just trying to do is just get the community back together so that we can just play some games everyone right. here yeah. wants to play some games right uh, registration is um, hundred dollars per team so which is twenty dollars per person and, um, oh looks oh, like we it looks like we are back in the game yep it does look like we're back and in the we're game thrown right into a team fight and it looks like Ari's taking over the team fight he got hits a charm on the Kaisa mm -hmm. Ooh. Gets, gets a J4 Ooh. And triple kill for the Ari. It looks like CWB is back in this game. They were able to almost ace completely UOG. And now the gold lead went from 7,000 down to 2K. Right. Or about 3K. Yeah. CWB also very gets, good. gets the third Infernal Drake. Well, their second Infernal Drake. Oh, yeah. yeah. But really, uh, I, if we could, I would love to watch that replay. But it's okay. You know, with that technical difficulty, we, we, we don't want to have to go back and... Uh, Replay it until later, maybe. But we do see like Willow is looking up to this Darius. Darius does get caught and gets it shut down onto this Darius. The Darius was a little overzealous. He was pushing a little too far with a little HP that he had, knowing that there was still one Yoji member alive. And while we were gone, it looks like Yoji was able to secure one Baron. Oh, well, realistic, I think they all five had Baron until yeah. that team fight down right, at bot yeah. lane. Um, I'm going to assume that Willow was not in that team fight that they yeah. took. Um, he may have not been there, or maybe he got chunked out super early to where he had to to leave. But it's fine. It's okay. Game's going on. Game does go on. And things are looking a lot better for CWB now. Like, I, I'm not too sure what happened to that technical difficulty. But, but yeah. it's, it, it's crazy to see that CWB even has a remote chance for this to happen. I'm going to assume that what happened was... Uh, just a team, fa team fight went raw, or maybe they just... Oh, well, it looks like they might be here. They're, just, they're sieging onto mid lane right now. There's a TP Orin gone TP out to Orin. the mid lane. They really want this hey, to go on. Bubble. Good bubble by Nami, and they're looking and to Orin getting kill CC'd. this Orin. CC League CC locked. CC locked, and then the all Nautilus ult goes up, but they're going to disengage. Tidal wave goes up too. But great tidal wave out by Nami, and Orin goes up. Or it misses the charm Oh, the force guard goes up. 
Call the Forge God goes out. And able to hit two people and able to enable Jakey to get that R up. Yep, and it looks like they're just stuck in the team fight. And it looks like CWB, they're just dead. They, and this actually might be the end of the it game. They, they the still the have game. Baron on Willow. It's quite possible that they can push down this mid lane. Uh, TP, uh, the time death timers are still 30 seconds, but they don't have a wave. That is the only problem is they don't have a wave. They're tanking right now to try to get this mid lane turret. They do still have five void grubs, so pushing turrets might not be easy. We do see Baron is out, so they might be able to just get an in him. But great team fight uh, from the side of UOG. They really were able to capitalize on the fact that the, the CWB team just doesn't have the engage. Right, yeah. They don't have the engage, definitely. Uh, we saw the tidal wave go off, and maybe that may have been good enough um, for the team to be able to play, but it is what it is. And now the, there is a 6K gold lead. And Cheeky just taking the blue buff from the Jin Zhao. Yep, and we do see that. Like, again, they got the mid, -hit, mid lane inhib. Everyone's resetting now. And as we do look at what's going on, it looks like both teams, they're just going to kind of just trade farm here. They're just going to go uh, back, try to get some items. And we do kind of see uh, that there is... Oh. It looks like it is going to be a full AP team. And things are going a little slow. Uh... Wow. This game is looking really, really tough. I mean, but it is a nice back and forth. You right. know, both, yeah. both teams are able to fight. And it wasn't just a complete dominance. Uh, but it does look Yo, like Lucy Bear might be caught out here on the side lane. The R here? Call, call, call the, the Forge, forge God goes, goes out. out. Are you forced R to R? All. Oh, one more. She only has one more one dash. More dash. She probably doesn't get out of goes this. Out. Charm goes out. Calcism goes out. And it looks like Ari is dead here. And Ari caught out of position in the bot lane. That actually might be very detrimental for this, and it could possibly end the game. Darius does have TP, and he's trying to make some plays on top lane so that he's constantly putting pressure so that the UOG team doesn't do anything. But they are grouping up mid. They're taking up the, the bot farm and everything. Let's go ahead and look at the items here. We do see... Kaisa is 11-1. That is a really strong Kaisa. She is fed. She's full items. Uh, Nami. And, and it's, just, it's just bot lane dominance right now, you know? Uh, the Kaisa was able to get the lead that she needed to be able to carry solo carry this game. Then the Blast Cone goes over. Looks like Yuji is trying to lay siege right now. Just trying to get the waves in. Post going down. Teams are they're playing it a little slow. They're trying to get um, they're trying to match waves right now. We do see that the top lane does have a big wave being pushed in, and the UOG is looking to just do the UOG special. This is something that I've known since my time at UOG. The UOG death push. The UOG death push. We're just looking at it. they might be looking getting caught. to get caught out. Right. Call the Forge God goes out. Darius is dead. Call the Forge God gets the knock up for the also, and Jakey just getting in there, and forces the Zyda flash, and they get two. Definitely good. And UOG, UOG looking there. to end bot here, possibly. And they are looking to bot here. Uh, they are going to tank. Oh, but Willow goes oh, in Willow and gets in. the kill gets onto the kill on Ari. Ari. Nami misses the bubble, and this looks like an end for Yoji. And it's looking like a GG from here, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Yoji take game one by pushing out. And it, it's a very good game. Very back and forth. Very both back teams, and forth. Um, both teams yeah. were really strong. They, I mean, it looked like total dominance from the beginning of the game. But then CWB were able to climb back out during the technical difficulty. And game one goes to UOG. UOG. Taking game one off of the Cuddly Wudly Bears. Very great game, I was, like I was explaining. Um, it, it just looked like the team that we were watching for UOG just finally started clicking. They right. started finally, finally clicking in their heads to allow the team to work together to play these team fights well. Yes, they may have had mistakes once or twice in the game, but it's fine. But it's slowly getting there. For sure, yeah. Uh, definitely both teams both had their moments in that game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was really fun to watch. Definitely very fun to watch. Uh, I feel like the UOG 
kind of want in draft because they right, they, yeah. they perfectly drafted the team comp that would allow them to play to their their strengths. Right. We saw Willow on a, an eighty carry that he is very comfortable on. Uh, just be able to take over that game. I think he ended the game with like. 13-1 in like 18 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what we are going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and take a three-minute ad break and as we go ahead and start getting the game two preparations going on.
And we are back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two of the UOG Triton Esports League of Legends team versus Cuddly Wudley Bears. Now, Winston, let's go ahead and talk about what we saw that went on in game one. Right. So, um, you know, they had really big team fights, mm -hmm. um, especially during objectives. Um, for the most part, I was seeing a lot of Call of the Forge God going in and then JK following up with the last breath from Yasuo. Very posing combo because uh, Call of the Forge God able to get a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the knockups are obviously very good for Yasuo. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're able to just, you know, do that combo on repeat and yeah. No, definitely. Like the 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 team really did play around that fifth pick Yasuo that yeah. Jakey is very comfortable on, but realistically, the main carry was Willow. He was right for sure dominant on that guy. So I, like I said, I think he went like eleven or thirteen kills, one death, and like eighteen assists. He was everywhere and was a big pro like played a big part of winning every team fight because as the whole team was going in. Kaisa just sat in the back and he was able to just auto attack for free, get the W's off so that he can uh, park his passive, and really just play the team fights well as an AD carry, uh, gets to basically succeed. Right, yeah. But we did see that one team fight where CWB did look like they had some breath in them. They almost came back, they almost were able to get a gold lead, and truly did give UOG a run for their money. Right. And realistically, uh, it looked like the game was going to be a little lopsided at first. And, you know, the Yoji slowly built a really strong lead in the early game. But as we get into it, let's go ahead and just talk about draft for game number two. So really excited to see what they have a draft in store for a second game. Uh, looks like uh, both teams kind of have a feel for how each of them plays. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking to see uh, how they're going to change up this game. Definitely, I do expect bands to be a little bit different, or not, maybe not. CWB does going for the cane ban again, and it looks like CWB has chosen to take blue side again. Yep, definitely. Uh, you know, losers do get to pick what side they want to be on. Right. And cane ban again. Again, this cane ban is targeted towards Maui. Maui. I mean, sorry, Maui. Jakey. 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 Jakey is heavy cane player. He doesn't play it in the mid lane. I mean, he yeah. does, but like for fun. Yeah. And we do see UOG does ban Volley Bear again. Again, Volley Bear is a very dominant tank in the meta currently. Very oppressive both in top lane and in jungle. Right. So a very good ban from the side of UOG. And from what word I did just get, uh, it looks like UOG is doing an emergency sub right now. So, okay. uh, so we are going to have Coach Juju subbing in for Maui, uh, who uh, had to leave. Correct. The, uh, Maui had some personal issues that he had to take care of. So we do have their coach, Juju, on the jungle so I do expect this team to be a lot more coordinated now. Right. You know, as the coach subbing in, it does bring a different kind of aspect to the game, a different voice, right. especially. Um, you, know, uh, you know, as coach, uh, Gigi is just sitting back there and just watching the game go on. But uh, subbing in as a player, it's kind of a whole different story. He's able to kind of like uh, express like what he wants the team to do. Mm -hmm. um, and looking forward to it. And Gigi was previously jungler for the team. And he has a lot of experience with it and a lot of experience being a shot caller. And just really excited to see um, what he'll bring to the table. Definitely. And as we go back into the banning phase of game two, we do see Jinx again banned by UOG because it is probably one of the best top eight carries in the game. We do see Darius banned for the side of CWB. So no, no longer do they want to play it, but they also don't want to see the top laner cursed play. one on it as well. And we do see the Alawi ban as well, which means Mordekaiser's left open from the first game. Right. Let's see how this goes. <coughs> red band. We're still on waiting for the third one. We do get rid of the Oriana, Oriana ban. Standard bands. I uh, I felt like UOG is doing their homework. They do know that uh, Lucy, Lucy Bear does play a lot of Oriana. And they, I'm not too sure if the AD carry plays a lot of Jinx on the side of CWB, but I'm pretty sure it's just because it's a dominant pick at the moment. Right. CWB, let's see what they do pick for blue side. We did see them pick Darius first time. Will they go again and kind of disrespect the top laner and pick top lane? No. Looks like they're picking Twisted, Twisted Fate. Fate. Twisted Fate left open. And um, from what I know, uh, Lucifer is a Twisted Fate main too. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a, uh, he's a Twisted Fate main per se, but he does play a lot of Twisted Fate, whether it be the AP or the AD variation. But we don't know where this TF is going because it still can be played in bot lane and right. it still can be played in top lane. Mm -hmm. But we do see UOG answering with a possible Zaya hover. 
I don't know if I like this. I would probably not go ahead, but they are going to lock it in. Um, usually when you pick Zaya, you probably get like an engaged support. Right. But Zaya Rakan is left up. So will they go ahead and play the Zaya Rakan? Yep. And, yep. and like they looks like they're going to lock in Zaya Rakan. Definitely. It's, it is going to be locked in. Boom. And we do see Zaya Rakan picked up for the side of Yoji. This means CWB have the counterplay, the counterpick to figure out what is good into Zaya Rakan. Realistically, there's not that many good comps against it because Zyra Khan is such a strong duo that you have to play another strong duo that allows you to bully out the Zaya and uh, stop the Rakan from going in. Right. One of my favorite things, I think, uh, like Braum. Braum is very good. Ooh, it definitely. Looks like going for the Vayne pick? A Vayne pick here by CWB. Vayne did get nerfs recently to her Q and her, um, dub, uh, her passive, which kind of pushed her out of top lane, but it also greatly affected her in bot lane. But she still is maybe like a B to A tier pick in the ADC. And since they did see Zyra Khan, it looks like Vayne may be able to play this game where she gets to get those three items to become a very strong AD carry in the late game. But what, what will Blue Side pick? Oh, they picked the Maokai. Now, so Maokai looking like a flex pick here. It could be played in jungle or a support. Definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, it could be played in the jungle or support. There is a possibility of the big one top lane, but I, oh. I, I highly doubt it. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, though, this is a Maokai Vayne bot lane, which is just going to be so, so scaling. Like, the, like the Maokai is just going to allow this Vayne to get to a point in the game that will allow her to play uh, the team fights correctly. You know, with the TF, with the Maokai, they do have a very great pick potential and a very great peel potential to allow the vein to play. Uh, we do see Yoji does pick up Jakey's Yasuo again. I'm very surprised that this wasn't banned in the first, uh, the second game. I felt like they really drafted a comp that allowed Yasuo to, to really live and play. And we do see that Yoji bans away the Xin Zhao. We did see CWB have a very strong early game with that Xin Zhao. Uh, and now it's banned away. Right. But what will the blue side answer? I, I personally, I'd probably get rid of the Orn. Right. I thought the Orn Yasuo was really good. Um, I think Juju might pull out the, the J4 with the Yasuo or maybe something a little bit more on the A. Viego. Side. We do see Viego is banned. Um, I think this is a target ban towards Juju. Um, they don't want him on these carry junglers that will allow him to take over the jungle and the game itself. Right. Uh, and so... Very good ban, I guess. I mean, it's more of a target ban, but I feel like they should be targeting things that allow this Yasuo to breathe. Right. We do see an Olaf ban here. Very interesting ban. I think this would uh, this is a counter pick into top end jungle. Uh, they don't want to allow Olaf to basically bully whatever pick that top lane or jungle might pick out. I think with the Olaf, that might be a potential Mordekaiser, quite honestly. Right, yeah. I, I think that's a potential Mordekaiser because Olaf does kind of beat Mordekaiser in lane. Uh, well, kind of a skill matchup, but still, it's a possibility, right? Uh, we do see Malphite was banned. Strong ban. I don't know if um, the Cursed One plays Malphite. Uh, I think he might think the, the lane is a little too boring for him to play. Mm -hmm. So probably not something that he picks, but they're just getting rid of the potential Malphite pick. Right. Uh, which would really destroy Vayne for sure. So as we go into, we do see Red Side is now picking their fourth champion. And from here, we do see Diana. Diana did recently get a buff this patch. Um, they increased her attack speed to allow her clear to get better. And Diana Yasuo is a very strong mid-jungle pick. Right. Um, very good, very great skirmishing, especially at the level 6 uh, range, where Diana's ulti just allows Yasuo to ult off of that, just like what J4 did, just like what Orn did. Very great pick from here. And let's see how Blue Side not answers this. And Nocturne. Answer it with Nocturne. I like this. What they're saying is you have a deadly mid jungle combo, we have a deadly mid jungle combo. Nocturne plus TF allows them to go across the map without even, like, with, without a, like, basically, really instantly. You know, Nocturne turns off the lights and then TF ulties, and nobody knows where TF is coming from. So right. this mid jungle yeah. combo is looking to play the side lanes. While the mid jungle combo of Yasuo Diana is looking to play more of the uh, the team fights, 
we definitely do see that both teams have a clear oh and it looks like Yoji, or Yoji, uh, CWV is going for the Jax top lane pick here. Um, definitely. Going in blind. Definitely blind picking their Jax player here. And we, like I said, I, th I knew this was possibly coming, that the Mordekaiser may have been picked. Right. But Jax and the Mordekaiser, I'm not very big on top lane matchups. I don't really understand the, uh, the nuances of what's really good. Um, it, it may be good. Oh, but they're switching to an Aatrox matchup. And from what I understand, the Aatrox versus Jax matchup, it's a very skill-based. It's like basically whoever gets, whoever plays the fights better right. wins. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the different comps. We see that CWB has a very good go button. It's yeah. not like heavy engage realistically. It's more of like side lane pick potential. Right. Really strong pick potential. But UOG still has their clear cut, oh, we're going to team fight. Now, although Nocturne TF is a very strong combo, they still do have a Zaya Rakan, which Zaya can just press R and nullify everything that Nocturne and TF want to do. So they do have to play around cooldowns to maybe allow this comp to really thrive. Mm -hmm. But it's still a very short range comp. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very excited to see how this is going to go. Uh, I definitely think that both teams have clear-cut ways of what how they want to play. Uh, CWB wants to probably stay away from those team fights, while UOG wants to hopefully push the team fights to come together. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the comps? So looking at both comps, CWB does have a more solid team comp in terms of like frontlining and engaging with the Maokai pick and the Nocturne, mm -hmm. uh, able to follow up on a Maokai or Jax engage. Yep. Um, Twisted Fate able to just maybe uh, Throw a gold card and hopefully catch somebody who's caught out and get a free pick. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it looks like we're just going to the draft here on League of Legends. And uh, again, we are going to have another spectator delay, just a minute or two after this. And um, yeah, definitely. You know, pro draft is a very great tool to be able to use uh, for these players that probably don't have all the champions. So it just allows us to like basically nullify and really not care about not having champions so that yeah. seeding doesn't matter right so uh as we do get in uh like again let's talk let's talk about how the drafts and how both teams are going to win definitely that cwb once they hit their level sixes they want to look in those side lanes they either want to yeah. get that Jax fed or they want to get the t uh, the bane fed mm -hmm. and realistically if i was cwb i would target top lane yeah i think um Ethan, especially on these like carry top laners, kind of gets overzealous, kind of gets over, uh, like he basically will want to try to fight all the time. So he may be a very, very easy gank target. I mean, we did see Cuddle Bear, uh, Xin Zhao last game go top lane and actually get two or three kills. Yeah. So maybe continuing that pattern of just targeting ta top lane might be good. But on the flip side, they have to worry about Willow's AD carry. Yeah. Definitely Willow on ADC has been able to s to get a tremendous lead that just allows him to thrive in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe to make uh, making sure that uh, Maokai, uh, Machi Bear, definitely doesn't get caught out a lot so that he, you know, doesn't give away those free kills like he did when he was on Nami. Um, but wouldn't be too bad right yeah so going back to earlier um like i said uh, cwb does look like they have very good engage with the maokai twisted fate and nocturne mm -hmm. um on the side of yog uh it looks like they're pretty good um in team fights uh with the recon w and the recon ult mm -hmm. or is that his w the knock up well his w yes his yeah, w is the, the knock up, up. yeah uh, with, uh, very good uh, that could set up yasso as well as the diana i could set up the yasso as well as atrox cues um, <clears throat> yeah, no, definitely uh, the way that UOG want to play it out is uh, Diana and Rakan do want to look at a, a possible engage. Uh, but before we talk a little bit more, we're going to go into a quick ad break to, uh, uh, to basically just, you know, help our sponsors out.
And we are back, ready for game two of the UOG Triton Esports versus Cuddly Woodley Bears. Winston, tell us a little bit about our sponsors, you know? Of course. So, um, again, we'd like to thank our sponsors again GTA, Pacific Federal Management, NACE Esports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, Twitch, Lottie Esports League, UOG Endowment Foundation, University of Gone Triton Store, Heavy Hitters and Micronesian Brokers Incorporated. Definitely, without these sponsors, uh, the UOG stream wouldn't be the UOG stream, and we definitely do so appreciate every single one of you that help us, the UOG League of Legends community, thrive in the streams that we do. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit more of game two, you know, like what do we want to see from game two? So definitely, um, like you said earlier, we're gonna, on the side of CWB, they're looking to play towards their level six. Um, for the most part, their level sixes are very good power spikes with the Nocturne um, Paranoia, with the Twisted Fate um, Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, those are very good tools to kind of engage and kind of roam on people. Definitely. Um, on the side of EOG, again, they're also kind of looking to farm up to their power spikes. Uh, Diana with the level six. Uh, Darius, or Darius, Aatrox, uh, just kind of looking to farm up to and kind of just like bully the jacks. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. Zyrocon also looking to just farm hard and scale. For sure. And uh, as we get into this game, we do see that CWB is ready and prepared for the possible invade that UOG did against them on game one. So they are sitting in that bot tri bush to possibly catch if UOG wants to do it, but UOG's level one isn't the best, so I don't think they're going to try it. Uh, like, they don't want to try it. They're just going to uh, do a quick five-man you know, five man point just to make sure that nobody else is trying to get invade, get some vision. Anything like that, and we do see there is a quick pause. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a couple, a little bit of a issue with basically the. I think it's ping issues, maybe lag. Maybe ping or settings issues. Uh, ping or settings issue. Uh, I know you know GG probably is just coming off into the game, so he's probably trying to make sure that his configurations are all good to go. Uh, but like, yeah, let's get back into it. Like, like I said, uh, so we do want to see, a, you know, a better, a clean. Oh well, never mind. That was a really quick pause. So they're just fixing their settings. Uh, never mind, the game is frozen Looks again. Looks like stream is frozen again. We're having the same issue as we were having earlier. Yeah, so we're going to um, go. Uh, sorry about that, guys. It looks like there is going to be some technical difficulties again. We're going to get this game reset it as soon as possible. Apologize for that. Uh, this is um, all live. Yeah. Like, you know, we wish we kind of had, like, uh, you know, maybe VODs. It would have been a lot smoother, but it's okay. We're live We're live viewing, and it's totally fine. We're, we're not going to miss that much of the game. Um, we are currently loading back, but let's let's you know let's talk about it. Cuddly Wudley Bears in game one, they they kind of um, they 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 kind of almost came back in the game. Yeah, definitely. Oh well, oh, there, there you go. Looks like the game is back. Wasn't that bad of a fix? And we are back in one minute and ten seconds of the game. Um, definitely. What do you expect from game two? So game two, looking to see a little more action, uh, especially with these um, laners, uh, Aatrox and Jax, um, just really like fight heavy champions. Also, uh, Diana and Nocturne engage heavy uh, junglers. Mm -hmm. um, in the mid lane, um, looking for uh, Jakey to kind of just like uh, take advantage of the Swiss of Fate's immobility. Um, I play a lot of Swiss of Fate and have a lot of trouble going against Yasuo for the most part. Um, and yeah. Like as we're seeing here, Jakey just getting free trades on to debate in between rotations of his pick card, mm -hmm. and yeah, definitely. Uh, Twisted Fate is one of the hardest counters. Or sorry, Yasuo is one of the hardest counters into Twisted Fate because he can just win wall the gold card, yeah, or or any of his autos or his Qs. So it just kind of nullifies what the champion really wants to do in lane. Yeah, and we do see the level twos are going on, and from there we see Jakey and Lucy Bear just taking quick trades at each other. Uh, no one's really dropping their helves. No one's really uh, getting hurt or anything like that. But bot lane does take advantage of the level two. Yoji mm -hmm. gets level two first, and Ooh, Han goes into the game. Quick trade onto um, the Oslo here, but bot lane did hit level two first, and they try to do a quick trade onto each other. Uh, it, it did look at like the CWB bot lane actually got a better fair trade. Um, looks like Itchy took a lot more damage. Uh, but no pots were used. Good W by Itchy there from max range. Getting a few a, a quick poke damage. And there's the first health pot used in bot lane. Um, again, this bot lane, they, you know, Saira Khan is very strong at do, uh, playing these team fights. They just got to kind of chill and relax a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take a look. It looks on. like 
Aatrox is pathing towards the Nocturne on his blue. Um, looking to just ward it off. Um, just to let Diana know where Nocturne is and where he's playing. Definitely, they're just trying to get some vision on finding out where Nocturne is. And it looks like Juggler started on opposite sides of the map. Yep, they are. Oh, there's a good engage by the Itchy there, and he is go oh, fly oh, Ignite is down. They might be able to kill this Maokai, and, and first, first blood, blood. goes to UOG. First blood to UOG, but then the Blade Caller by Willow, able to trade a little bit more HP onto this vein. Something you don't want to see from the side of CWB. Their team is scaling. They, they do not want to take these early trades. They want right. Vayne to be able to get these like early uh, early farm, just relax a little, just try not to die. But we do see a jungler. Oh, this gold card goes on. Gold card goes on to Jakey. Has to oh, flash. Flashes. Oh, that was definitely a late flash by Nocturne there. He did have the tether for the fear ready to go, but the flash from, from Jakey was able to break it just by a little sliver margin. Maybe if that flash went through, it might have been able to kill um, right. Jakey there. But we do see T top lane is getting a little bullied out, and Jakey is taking the advantage and punishing this TF. Uh, looks like Jax is kind of low, though. Uh, he might have to play a little save. I don't think he's going to be able to get this wave in if the cursed one just hits his Qs. And then, wait, Jax is going Jax in? Jax going in for the engage, gets the E off. Definitely was really just doing that trade to get the cannon. Right. You know, he, he didn't want, nobody likes losing cannons. I know you're yeah. a solo laner for sure. I don't want to lose my cannon. I don't want to lose, no one wants to lose cannon. Yeah, that, that's a very important, you know, it's tilt, it's tiltable. Oh, ooh. Should he be able to win wall the blue card by TF? Definitely something very important to make sure that he doesn't get blue carded there, even though he was just going to take a reset anyways. But very well played by that early bot lane kill. You know, they took advantage of uh, Machi Bear walking too far forward yeah. for some reason. And Rakan just getting that flash. Uh, I don't know if he flashed W engage, but he just got that W engage. But Jax is going in. Counter Strike goes off. Stun goes out. And we do see a uh, Aatrox and Jax dueling it out. And Aatrox not able to hit any of the Qs. He is currently spacing the Aatrox really well. Jax is getting taken advantage of. It's a very good trade by Jax, but um, unfortunately, he does not get the kill. Definitely a great trade, but we do see Diana's hovering here, and it might be very scary Diana for this Aatrox. Flash down by the curse. Jax, Jax flashes. Does flash too, but Diana is here and able is. Able and to Diana get gets the kill. Great kill by a uh, great pathing by Juju there. Uh, again, they are playing on opposite sides, the Nocturne and Diana. So Diana being there while Nocturne is bot side, just kind of a clear cookie cutter play right there. If I if I don't right. so, so myself, it looks like Diana's going for the grubs, and it looks like we're going on an engage on bot lane. Malkai goes into the Rakan. Rakan gets stunned. Mm -hmm. Great, and great. Um, counter engage there by the Maokai. He was able to catch Aiden lacking. But Khan goes back in, gets rooted. Gets good kill. Mate, this might be a kill onto Khan gets exhausted. Here. Exhaust goes down, but then Aiden getting, Aiden getting the kill. Vayne gets the Aiden. first kill onto bot lane. Oh, gold card. Oh, T Tia Destiny gets Destiny goes up in. with Destiny. Oh, but and Willow trades one, but 2 for one on the side of CWB. Again, we talked about this, the, the fact that TF and Nocturne, once they get level 6, they're able to join any of these side lane plays. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think Itchy, he was kind of itching for a fight there, if I may say so. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. He really kept trying to push for that kill onto Maokai, but Maokai able to actually react. That's just a ping diff. I don't know if he yeah. plays from the stage or something, but that was a quick Maokai W onto the Rakan engage which just destroyed the, all the plays that uh, Itchy wanted to do. Uh, and we do see that there is a quite a CS defi uh, deficit on the top lane. We do see 25 to 40 onto Jax and Aatrox, but I don't think this actually matters. I feel like Aatrox may have an item advantage, but Jax kind of does scale into the late game and may be able to win in the side lanes. Yeah. Um, we do see Lucy Bear is dodging, gets the gold card, but blue cards, the Yasuo is going in, but Malkai we do see Maokai. Maokai Jakey Qs. gets W by Maokai. Definitely. And Jakey able to escape. Definitely good plays by Jakey there. Doing Yasuo things, eating through minions. Everyone hates it. It's super annoying. But great uh, great disengage by the Yasuo. He was able to fancy feed his way and out Juju of Juju able to oh. clean up the kill on the Maokai and going for Nocturne's Raptors. Oh, and on, you know, off screen we did see Juju was able to counter gank the Maokai. Level 4. Uh, he did look like Juju did uh, use his ulti. So... He just got, he just caught the Maokai lacking, you know, like we're trying to rotate through lanes. It was just a great play by the UOG coach himself. Yep. It's like UOG going for Dragon here. Um, 
looks like a free dragon here. Uh, looks like uh, CWB not looking to contest this dragon. Uh, looks like just a free dragon for Yoji. Definitely. Um, you know, with the uh, with the death of their support, they would be undermanned if they try to fight that. Uh, even if they have these global ultis from TF and Nocturne, it still would be a 3v4 at most. Uh, we do see uh, Jax is taking some more brutal damage in the top lane. Kind of getting a little bit of a CS gap because he's just getting hit just by getting everything. really low. But a curse one, he is looking to dive. Looking he to is, dive this Jax with the big wave that is coming in. Definitely is hungry for this kill. He really wants it. Fishing for it, but it. unfortunately does not get anything with the Q. Definitely. Um, let's go ahead. We do see the bot lane. Uh, I mean, bot lane has, may have gotten the double kill on the vein. But it doesn't matter because he's still a little bit low in uh, uh, gold. He is 10 CS down. We do see Nocturne is on a ward. Cursed One does ping it out. They sniff out the Nocturne being topside. Uh, possibly could look to uh, Paranoia up top lane and maybe look for a kill. Uh, the Cursed One does have no flash. So if they were to able to get onto him and CC lock him, I'm pretty sure that they could get the kill. Uh, mid lane. Mid lane is still stable lane. They're they're just trading their HPs. They're really trying to see who can have the tempo to be able to walk to the side lanes. We do see Nocturne is kind of positioning for a possible dive, and I think Curse One does like Curse One does know this is here. Nocturne TFLT goes out. Nocturne Paranoia, Paranoia goes out. Definitely. And engage onto the Aatrox. Destiny goes out, and oh. Gold Card going onto the Aatrox. Oh, Aatrox able to get to Jax. Juju coming in for the counter gank, yeah. and. Juju, uh, oh. Diana going in, and Juju able to secure both kills. Great, very clean, gown, very clean counter gank by Juju there. Able to follow up on the engage by both Twisted Fate and Nocturne, and able to just capitalize on that and get both kills, and only losing one from Yoji. Definitely, um, you know, you like the the play was there. Uh, Lucid Bears. Uh, TF and the paranoia, uh, Destiny and the paranoia by Nocturne. They read the play that was going to be able to happen. They knew, but Juju did know that there was a possible play going to happen at top. But they had that ward and that one pixel brush near the blue buff and Gromp that was able to spot Nocturne, kind of hovering topside. So Juju knew that he had to be up there for the possible play. Um, it did look a little rough. I mean, uh, I believe it was uh, Jax that died first. Right. He was yeah. a little low in health. So once he went in. It was gonna be uh, unless they bursted the Aatrox, it was gonna he was gonna die. And Nocturne, watching walking down here in bot lane, does get spotted by that tri war, uh, tri bush ward, and it, uh, with looks that, like Yoji looking to start grubs here. Definitely um, with the top prio. Uh, Jakey hopefully trying to look for mid prior here to able to rotate, but TF does get the first walk here over to the void grubs. True, but I don't think they have the ability to fight this. You know, they did just lose that two uh, two v three in the top yeah. lane. So they're kind of down on items. I mean, Aatrox has a fully built Profane Hydra, while Jax is still sitting on components. Uh, Diana also has four kills and possibly will be able to back with a full item. Uh, I think it, it's going to be looking like a Nasher's tooth on Diana first. Ooh, good uh, dodge there by the Jax, being able to counter. Ooh, but the bot lane looks engage like is going in. engage going up. Maokai getting caught, and it looks like Maokai is ignited, and Willow able to secure the kill on the Maokai. Hopefully trying to look more here on the vein, but... That is all they get. Definitely, it looks like the uh, support player was caught lacking, r trying to go on another roam timer. Uh, he's had this issue all uh, all stream today, where he kind of just gets caught trying to make things happen. Oh, but it, uh, on as we say that top lane gets solo killed, and the cursed one lives with 10 HP and a dream. Uh, he does get the kill onto Jax as he was kind of heavy trading with them in the early game, so it's kind of hard. Nocturne hovering bot side. Yep, Nocturne is currently hovering bot side. I don't think Has this Paranoia, sees him. Has Paranoia, but looks like Zion or Khan are backing. Yep, and he might be looking on this mid laner. Ja uh, Jakey uh, does see this ward. He's going to see it. He gets caught. Paranoia. Oh, he's going to get feared. Guard. Jakey gets feared. Yep, and it looks like Nocturne and them are just going to disengage because there was no follow up with the Maokai. The Maokai in, going in on Jakey. Does get the flank, gets the W off, and he might be able Cues to... Cues him to the wrong way. Jakey forced a flash. Oh. And Jakey is out. Well played by the side of CWB. They were able to get that flash, a very important flash off of Jakey there. I feel yeah. like if they were just a little bit more positioned correctly, they may have been able to get that kill. Yeah. And it looks like we're having more technical difficulties with the stream fro frozen. Uh, I think League Client is kind of bugging out right now. We apologize for that. We'll try to get the stream up as soon as possible. Uh, definitely. Um, yeah, let's talk about the game state right now. Uh, what do you think, um, in the state of the game right now, uh, what do you think is about to happen? 
Well, r right now we do see that there is kind of a little bit of a, a difference in the skill in the jungle. Um, Juju is currently reading the plays a lot better than what the Nocturne is, and uh, they're kind of like CWB is a little scrambled. They do don't understand what they need to do. They're kind of forcing plays. They're kind of just all over the place right now. But if they are able to kind of get a little bit more calm and collected, they kind of just read, uh, kind of just take a breather. They may be able to stop these forced plays. And we have game back up. Um, no, no, nothing very yeah. important has happened in the last. Looks week. like OG going for dragon again. Yep. Um, again, CWB. They don't. They just aren't in position to be able to take this dragon. So they're gonna have to give, give it, it up. up. <coughs> There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, just kind of play the scale, you know. Uh, we don't need. Oh, we do see a Yasuo is TPing in the top lane to make sure that Jax does not completely get any of these plates and pushes in these two waves. Great TP to be able to match that uh, that power play that Jax may have been able to position upon. And it looks like we are going to have another Infernal Soul this game. Um, looking very good, uh, especially for both teams. Infernal Soul is pretty crucial with the Infernal Soul passive, and just stacking Infernal Dragons is really good with just the bonus attack damage and all of that. Definitely. Uh, right now we do see, like I said, uh, there is a bit of a jungle gap at the moment. Uh, Diana is up 30 CS, has 4 kills, and it's just really activated compared to the side of uh, CWB and their Nocturne. Nocturne. And Yuji looking to start Herald here. Yep, I mean, Yuji just has a commanding lead to the point that they will always win all of the, uh, all of the, the scraps because they're just ahead of gold. Uh, so... It looks like Yoji, they're just going to kind of push the jungler out of his own jungle be just because they can. And it looks like they're just going to engage onto the Nocturne. Engage on the Nocturne and Nocturne goes down. Good flash by Nocturne, but it doesn't matter because Juju had the extra dash onto him due to his Q. And just an easy pick. Uh, you know, like Nocturne doesn't get to play this game anymore. His jungle is completely taken over. And it's, it's just... It's just what it is. Oh, Jax does get Jax stop going onto on to the Aatrox, stopping his back. But it looks like Jax is going to die here by Juju. The yeah, yeah I, I mean, I see the play. You know, I get it. Jax wanted to stop the TP. He wanted to stop the base. But you have nobody there. And your jungler just died to two of them. We do see... We even saw Yasuo was pushing the lane in top. Yeah. Lane. So it's like, why even make that play? That play was non-existent. I, I mean, I guess... He doesn't understand how far behind he is. Like, yeah. He wasn't going to win that fight no matter what. Right. Uh, so as we get into this game, uh, we do see that there is actually a 7k gold lead. 7k gold lead. Um, yeah. 7k gold lead in 15 minutes. But you know what happened in game one when a 7k gold lead happened? They were CW. able to turn it around with that one team fight. Definitely. Yeah. CWB were able to come back in one team fight that Yoji misplayed. Uh, I'm, I feel like this game may have not the same uh, outcome though due to the fact that they do have their coach so it's like a different voice of telling them what to do kind of mind controlling them to play the uh, play the game uh, but right now uh, CWB just needs to kind of slow down the pace like realistically there's nothing you can do about uh, the, the, the game state like you just have to farm Vayne needs these three items to be able to be strong Jax right. needs his three items uh, TF just needs to get to that point in the game where he's just going to be an R bot uh, yeah. and kind of just be a gold card. He's just going to continuously stun whoever is in the front. Although this comp doesn't necessarily want to play front to back, so they do have to get these picks on the side lane once they get the enough items to be able to control the game. Right. Uh, we do see uh, like everything's kind of just being slowed down right now. You know, they're trying to they're basically fighting for vision. Uh, continuously trying to get this mid push so that uh, nothing, nothing happens and they don't lose their mid turret. Because mid turret is very important. You know, it it covers such a vast majority of all these plays if the mid turret goes down. And I'm pretty sure Yoji get this turret off yeah. of this push right here. Uh, we do see the push and going on. Looks Pinks like Yoji down. looking to take tier one on mid, and look, they get it. Makai goes in, R goes out, Paranoia goes out, going onto the Zaya, Zaya goes and able to get out. Diana goes in, R goes in. And it looks like Diana getting a double kill here. Or is I getting a double kill here? Uh, great engage by Juju. Um, Aatrox flashing onto the Twisted Fate, who in turn flashes back. Gangsta on tower, and looks like Aatrox goes down by Jax. And Harold going down mid. Great. And Willow play. taking tower shots, dies by the tower, but gets executed. 
great play by the side of UOG. You know, they we saw the side uh, we saw CWB's bot lane and jungler kind of hovering around the mid lane to kind of stop them and punish them from taking that mid turret. But UOG was ready and to for counterplay. You know, yeah. Once uh, this is the problem, like I, that I spoke about earlier, with the Nocturne versus Zaya. Nocturne goes in, Zaya presses R, and nullifies everything that Nocturne wants to do in the game. So realistically, like the execution was played perfectly by Willow. Uh, although he did kind of die to a, taking his turret shot, he probably just didn't realize that he had turret aggro mm -hmm. for whatever, whatever reason. But UOG come out with a clean counterplay. They, they knew this play was going to happen. Juju was sitting at Raptors, and he waited for the engage to come, went in, and was able to clean it up. Uh, but Jax did get a nice cleanup kill onto Cursed One because he kind of over pushed his boundaries, got overzealous, and tried to really get that kill onto, uh, I believe it was Vayne. Oh, no, sorry, not Vayne. Uh, Maokai or TF? Or uh, TF. Jack. Oh, yeah. He was trying to get to yeah. TF. But again, again, CWB posturing to try to fight them at this dragon, but they just can't. They're just too far behind. Now 10k gold lead. About 10k gold lead. Definitely, um, definitely yeah. 10k gold lead. So it's like 10k is a lot of gold. They, yeah. they, they just needed to play this game slow. They needed to stop the tempo. They're bleeding out too much resources. Um, top lane just needs to go in and kind of just push the lanes out. Uh, every lane just has to play safe. They can't keep taking these fights that they're, that are just unwinnable. Um, and Aatrox going in onto the Swiss FA, but Paranoia goes in. Uh, Nocturne goes onto the Aatrox, gets feared. And Aatrox getting whittled down, and Aatrox dies. Aatrox does get killed, but on the side of that, we do see top lane. Uh, there was another action that went happened where Juju and them collapsed on Jax for being mispositioned. So a great counter read by the side of Yoji. They knew that the play was coming in bot side, so they took the play top. And from there, things are mellowed out. Uh, Cursed one, you know, he was just kind of a little... A little like both actually both top laners were just a little overzealous. They were pushed a little too far forward. They caught out. So they were just pushed a little uh, too far forward for to so just basically allow. But it looks like Yoji does want to start the Baron up now, and so they are going to take it. Uh, side of CWB are just they just don't have the vision. They just don't have every, uh, the information to know that UOG is taking this. But UOG are too strong. Like even if CWB did know, there's nothing they can do about this. So now Yoji takes the reset, they take the Baron, the free objective, and let's see what they do with this Baron play. Uh, if we look at the item difference, let's, let's take a look at this. Like Aatrox has two items to Jax's one. Diana has three items three to items. Nocturne's one and a half. Yeah. Uh, Yasuo is kind of chilling there, you know. Pretty even with the Twisted Fate. Yeah, fairly um, even. Fairly even. Uh, just 30 CS gap. Uh, On bot side, Zaya has two and a half items. Um, well, Vayne has about one and a half. Definitely, and um, it's it's just kind of chilling. Uh, looks like they're just trying to push the lanes out. They're doing a 4-1 right now. Yuji's doing a 4-1 at least. Looking uh, to make use of this Baron buff to just take turrets. Yep, uh, Curse push One. In. Curse One looks like he's just going to rotate, maybe go around and wrap around this TF and push him out of under this turret because he knows he's strong enough to do this. Uh, UOG is kind of posturing around. They're, they're looking. Itchy goes over the wall. Aiden but W's in, but misses and E's back to JG. Definitely. Go, uh, you know, just kind of fishing for any play that he can make. They, uh, Rakan is one of these like car uh, these support champions that is just allowed to do that because of his... Uh, his, his, his engage and disengage. Yeah, just, just his abilities in yeah. general. His W goes in and his E gets him out. Uh, just UOG taking boss tower. UOG in. goes in and Malkaia goes out. Paranoia goes out. And Paranoia goes into the team, and Nocturne gets absolutely deleted. A double kill for Aatrox, and it looks like Aatrox gets a triple kill, and they're looking to end here. Very well played by the side Very of Very well played by the side of um, UOG. Uh, GG's, uh, well played by both sides. Um, yeah, so like UOG, they, they caught the Maokai out again, like all game. Maokai has been a little bit mispositioned. But I mean, there really is just nothing they can do. They, they, they were just too far ahead. And UOG take game two and win the best of three versus the Cuddly Wudley Bears.
Again, we just want to thank everyone here who came to support and watch the stream. Uh, we want to thank all the players for giving their playing their game out. Um, we do apologize for the technical difficulties that we had, but we're still able to bounce back and give you guys. We also want to thank all the teams behind the scenes, our production team, uh, for being able to try their best to capture the moment of the stream. And of course, my co-cast, I want to thank him too for joining me on the stream, being able to try his best. Uh, you know, the team here are really trying to make this an experience for everyone. Thank you. So once again, before we close the stream, I'd like to thank our sponsors, GTA, Pacific Federal Management, NAC Esports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, Twitch, Lada Esports, Yoji and Diamond Foundation, University of Guam Trine Store, Heavy Hitters, and Micronesia Brokers Incorporated. This is Damon Michael and Winston signing off. See you guys next time.